Stealth fighters are widely seen as the pinnacle of modern aviation technology, but in terms of both sheer performance and operating cost, they often fall short of older, more dated platforms like the F-15, F-16, or Su-35. Fighter design is incredibly complex, but a fair portion of the blame for this underwhelming performance can actually fall on one technology, and that's about to change. Let's talk about ceramic RAM and the future of stealth. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. While often thought of as little more than stealth paint, radar absorbing materials are really essential to the operation of any stealth aircraft, but they also account for a big portion of the operating costs associated with fifth generation fighters. Worse still, the physical limitations of these materials often then become the physical limitations of the aircraft they treat, stifling the performance of the world's most advanced fighters in the air while simultaneously limiting both fleet size and readiness rates on the ground. But that really may not be the case for much longer. A new kind of ceramic-based radar absorbing materials could not only drastically reduce the limitations these materials place on low observable aircraft, they could literally launch stealth into a new era of aviation, paving the way for stealth to enter the hypersonic realm. In the short term, this material could dramatically reduce the costs of operating existing stealth fighters and even allow for the development of lower cost stealth platforms with similar performance to today's top dollar jets. But in the slightly longer term, it could allow America's next generation of stealth fighters to be faster, more aerobatic, and stealthier than anything that has ever taken to the sky. Now, in order to understand how valuable this ceramic-based RAM is, we need to understand what RAM is in the first place. But before we dive into that, I want to take a minute to thank Rodrigo Avella for letting me use his incredible artwork once again. As usual, when I use Rodrigo's art, you can find links to his website and Instagram in the description below. And I also want to let you guys know that I'll be traveling over the next few weeks to cover stories in a few different parts of the country, and I'm going to try really hard not to let that affect my video publishing schedule. But if it does and I miss a drop or post a video late, my apologies. Rest assured, I'll be back to business as usual just as soon as I get back to my office in a few weeks. All right, now back to the tech, because what the heck are radar absorbing materials anyway? You almost certainly already know that modern stealth aircraft leverage radar reflecting designs that are meant to deflect electromagnetic waves away from them rather than directly back at the receiver. But these designs alone aren't enough to make a modern fighter really stealth. They're also covered in layers of radar absorbing materials or RAM that dramatically reduces their radar returns. In technical terms, radar absorbing coatings are a special class of polymer based materials that absorb electromagnetic energy. But in simple everyday terms, this advanced and often troublesome material literally eats radar for breakfast. This is essential because even with advanced stealth designs meant to deflect radar waves, the leading edge of an aircraft's wings, its jet inlets, parts of its vertical tail surfaces, and other elements of a fighter all tend to produce radar returns. These facets of a fighter's shape are pretty essential for aerobatic performance, at least for now. And as a result, you'll often see a radar absorbent edge treatment over all of these portions of the aircraft. More radar absorbing materials are often incorporated into a honeycomb or similar structure that's placed inside the jet's intake. For the same reason, a jet's intake compressor fan will just produce a really big radar return. The radar absorbent materials used by modern American fighters today is really important. It's rated to absorb upwards of 70 to 80% of inbound electromagnetic energy. 
but it's also really expensive and really time consuming to maintain. And this is a big part of the huge expense associated with operating the F-22 or the F-35 for that matter. And that creates real financial limitations on stealth aviation. I'm going to quote Master Sergeant Francis Annette from the 388th Maintenance Squadron. He said, and I quote, Maintaining the radar absorbent coating on the surface of the F-35 is a job that takes very detail-oriented, sometimes tedious work, masking every small area, properly mixing chemicals, applying them precisely, smoothing and assessing the smallest imperfections. It's time-consuming, but it's vital to get it right. The only nations in the world today to develop their own operational stealth fighters are the US, China, and Russia. But that observation can be pretty misleading. If you were to take a tally of all the operational stealth fighter fleets all over the world today, Russia doesn't even break into the top 10. The U.S. unsurprisingly ranks first, with over 600 total stealth fighters, F-22s and F-35s combined followed by a steep drop-off to number two with China, who has maybe 100 to 150 Chengdu J-20 Mighty Dragons, depending on the source that you trust. From there, however, there's another steep drop-off, and then seven nations operating American-sourced F-35 fleets before you finally reach number 11 with Russia's mixed fleet of just 16 Su-57s, which includes 12 hand-built prototypes and just four serial production jets. Now, normally when I bring that up, it's to highlight how silly it is to compare the Su-57 in a one-to-one -one way with operational jets like the F-22 or the F-35 or even the J-20. I really bring it up this time to highlight how operating stealth fighters is a rich nation's game. It really ought to come as no surprise that the only two nations on the planet to operate stealth fighter fleets that extend into triple-digit ranges are also the two nations that top the global list of military spenders. And as I've covered in stories in the past, China actually spends a lot more on defense than these defense spending lists actually reflect. But that's a topic for another video on another day. The point is, it's clearly very expensive to operate stealth fighters. But the reason for that expense isn't as transparent. After all, these days you can buy an F-35A for less than a modernized F-15. It would seem like it's never been cheaper to fly into the stealth era. But the truth is, acquisition isn't the biggest financial hurdle for aspiring stealth air forces. Sustainment is. The Pentagon intends to buy 2,500 F-35s by the end of the program, and that represents a whopping $400 billion. But don't let the sticker price shock you, because operating this aircraft throughout the extent of its service life is expected to cost three times as much. The Government Accounting Office projects F-35 sustainment will top $1.27 trillion by the time it's retired. In 2020 alone, it cost about $7.8 million a year to operate each F-35A that a nation has in a hangar, with higher figures associated with more specialized B and C variants. And a sizable portion of that annual expense? Well, you guessed it. It comes down to repairing, maintaining, or replacing the radar-absorbing materials that coat these aircraft. And as a result, even the United States, with the largest defense expenditures in the world, has publicly stated that unless the sustainment costs of the F-35 can come down, they'll have to limit their purchases of these fighters. Okay, so now you have a general sense of just how expensive radar-absorbing materials can be and what a pain they are to maintain. But now let's talk about how they actually limit the physical performance of stealth jets. Because today's polymer-based RAM may be really good at absorbing electromagnetic energy, but it's not particularly good at surviving the rigors of combat aviation. Today's RAM begins to break down at temperatures that exceed 250 degrees Celsius, or around 480 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This becomes a huge problem for tactical jets that travel at supersonic speeds, where the combination of friction and air pressure on the leading edge of the wings and in portions of the tail can often exceed the temperature limits of RAM. It's also a problem for body panels located at the rear of the aircraft near the jet's exhaust. As a result, stealth fighters are designed in a way that's meant to mitigate friction on these leading edges, and that can compromise their aerobatic performance to an extent. But to make matters even worse, these accommodations for RAM aren't always effective. Back in 2011, the F-35B, which is the short takeoff vertical landing variant, and the F-35C, which is meant for carrier duty, were subjected to flutter tests. Now, a flutter test is a test of an aircraft's structural behavior under aerodynamic loads. These aircraft are rated for a top speed of Mach 1.6, but they were tested at slightly lower and more realistic speeds. The results were nonetheless troubling. After sustained flight at Mach 1.3, the F-35B showed bubbling and blistering, that's a direct quote, of the ram applied to both sides of the jet's horizontal tail surfaces and tail boom, or where the vertical tails connect to the fighter. The F-35C fared even worse, with, quote, thermal damage that actually compromised the structural integrity of both the horizontal and vertical tail surfaces found after sustained flight at Mach 1.3. As a result, both of these aircraft are now limited to speeds of Mach 1.2 or lower, and they're only able to sustain them for less than a minute, before the risk of damage to the aircraft becomes too severe to be permitted under anything other than emergency circumstances. Now, there are some important notes here. First off, Lockheed Martin has claimed to improve the durability of the radar absorbent materials used in the F-35 in later deliveries of these aircraft, which means this may not be as big an issue today as it was before, but there's no word on these speed restrictions being lifted. That may just be classified, or it may still be a real problem. Even with improved durability, I'd imagine it's still a real problem just because of the limits of these polymer-based materials. But you should also know that this isn't a problem that's unique to the F-35 in any way. In fact, if anything, the F-35 is probably less susceptible to these problems than other stealth fighters. Not only does the F-35 take a different approach to applying these materials, it's also built with extensive use of radar-absorbing polymer materials in the aircraft's composite structure itself. Aircraft built with less advanced materials utilized in their construction, older jets like the F-22 or foreign ones like the J-20 and Su-57, are just as susceptible to issues with RAM. Or, in some cases, the use of radar absorbent materials may be omitted from high friction areas on an aircraft, which would reduce maintenance requirements and operating costs at the expense of observability. Now, the hypersonic-minded among you have probably already realized that this means radar-absorbing materials, which are all but essential for any stealth aircraft, are a no-go for hypersonic applications. After all, an aircraft traveling at Mach 5, which is the lower end of the hypersonic realm, regularly sees temperatures as high as 1800 degrees Fahrenheit on the fuselage. After all, if today's polymer-based RAM starts to break down at speeds as low as Mach 1.3 on a jet like the F-35 that was designed to be covered in RAM and fly at supersonic speeds, you quickly come to realize that the physical limits of this material creates very real physical limits not only on today's stealth fighters, but on what we can design the next generation of stealth aircraft to do as well. But there are still more big problems with today's polymer-based RAM. It's also really sensitive to exposure to moisture and salt, which is a problem for the F-35B and C, both of which often operate from ships. And it's also sensitive to abrasive materials like sand, which those of you who've worn a uniform before can attest is a fairly common facet of modern warfare. So now we know how the problems with RAM are really the problems with modern stealth aircraft. So let's talk about the solution. Because efforts are underway to develop a new ceramic-based RAM coating that can sustain much higher temperatures and withstand significant environmental abuse. 
This new form of RAM is so promising that it could not only resolve the issues inherent to the material on existing stealth fighters, it could allow for the design of faster, more aerobatic stealth aircraft than ever before. It could even benefit hypersonic applications like the rumored Lockheed Martin SR-72 or whatever platform ultimately emerges from the Air Force Research Lab's Combined Cycle Scramjet Mayhem program. Back in 2020, a research team out of North Carolina State, led by Cheryl Zhu, announced the development of this new ceramic-based radar-absorbing material, and they immediately posited that it could be used for tactical fighter applications. According to their findings, this new RAM is actually even more effective at absorbing electromagnetic energy. While today's RAM is rated to absorb upwards of 70 to 80 percent of inbound radar waves, this ceramic RAM could absorb up to 90%. But maybe even more importantly, it's also harder than sand and extremely resilient to both moisture and high temperatures. As we talked about before, today's RAM begins to break down at around 480 degrees Fahrenheit. But this ceramic-based material can withstand temperatures as high as 3200 degrees, which is more than enough to sustain not only supersonic speeds, but hypersonic ones in excess of Mach 6. I'll quote Cheryl Zhu here. Fundamentally, there aren't any concerns with this material's performance or durability, so there are no longer any constraints on how the aircraft could be designed. Applying this new ceramic-based RAM is also a pretty simple process, at least when compared to applying today's polymer-based RAM materials. A liquid ceramic precursor is sprayed onto the aircraft and then just left exposed to the ambient air. Over the span of around two days, the liquid hardens into a solid ceramic material. Now, two days is about the same as the cure time on today's polymer-based RAM, but because the ceramic RAM is so durable, you could apply it way less often, which would mean a big drop in maintenance requirements, costs, and downtime, while simultaneously increasing readiness rates. Now, Cheryl Zhu and her team's work has been substantiated by a number of other peer-reviewed papers. I won't quote them here for the sake of time, but suffice to say, it's very promising. In 2020, Zhu's team secured funding from the Air Force Office of Scientific Research to continue the development of this invention for use in advanced stealth applications. Now, what that really means is that this ceramic ram could emerge as one of the more potent stealth improvements that we'll see on America's next generation of stealth aircraft, slated to enter service sometime in the mid-2030s. We're talking about the Air Force's next generation air dominance and the Navy's FAXX fighter programs. We could also see this material added to existing stealth fighters like the F-35 to not only unlock its full performance potential, but also reduce its operating cost, making it a more feasible aircraft for a broader variety of mission sets. Now, I do want to emphasize that fighter design, especially stealth fighter design, is incredibly complex, and this is just one variable among many. But it's crazy to think that what amounts to basically a thick layer of ceramic paint could have such huge reverberating effects in aviation for decades to come. In a real way, ceramic ram might unlock the future of stealth aviation. And with that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by Sandbox News today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.